This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realize how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute glutton for punishment. Seriously, give your head a wobble. But in either case, thank you very much for being here. I do genuinely appreciate it. So for today's video, we're taking a little bit of a departure from the usual kind of content we do. Normally we do TCG content. Well, today we're doing some Master Duel content. That's right, everyone's playing Master Duel. We're all about that hype and I am very much included in that category. So for today's video, we're going to be covering my Tri-Zoo deck. This is mostly aimed at people who are new and getting into the game. People who don't necessarily know an awful lot about the TCG side of things. And those of you who've played the TCG already know how the decks work. It's normally a little bit of a cookie cutter deck, although we do have one or two cards that we don't necessarily have access to in the TCG that changes how it will be played versus how we're going to play it in this game. I'm also going to do a match or two depending on the lengths on those so you can see exactly how the deck plays. Hopefully we don't brick and then you have some awful footage, but it might give you some ideas of what kind of lines of play to consider and use. By no stretch of the imagination am I a perfect player, but hopefully I can at least help you out with the basics. So like I say, Trizu is a pretty cookie cutter deck, so there's not an awful lot to see in here, but we're going to go ahead and talk through it and discuss the ratios that we're using and why I'm using those cards. Now, if you're someone who does play Master Duel and you're maybe considering playing the TCG or you're an existing TCG player, if you want to save some money on the new format that is coming up or will probably be out already by the time this drops, check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description. Use the code RUFIO15 for 15% off your eBay order. But anyway, it's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. So firstly, let me apologize about any noise in the background. For some reason, any time I run any kind of game, my laptop starts going absolutely mental and the fans kick in. I guess obviously to keep things cool, but it is so very fucking loud. So hopefully I can edit some of that out. It won't be quite as painful to hear in the background. Okay, we're just going to quickly take a look at the deck list of what I am running here. So we're just going to go ahead and look and see what we've got here. Again, the list is pretty cookie cutter. I mean, there's not really much to say. We're running triple copies of Nerval. This is pretty standard in here. Uh, this, of course, being able to search you basically any other copy of what you need. We are running triple copies of Maxi because Maxi is available in this game and Adding free cards to your hand is absolutely insane. So many people will just try and play through this and give you too many resources and just get absolutely clattered for it. There's just no good reason not to run it. We're running triple copies of Keras. This is normally two traditionally in the TCG. However, there's one or two cards that I'm not playing that I would maybe like to play in here that I don't have access to at the moment. So the third copy makes up for that at least a little bit. We're running triple copies of Kit. Uh, you want to see it, it's just Foolish Burial. Running triple copies of Fractal as well. Uh, yeah, you need to play three copies of this card. It's probably the best one apart from Nerval. Uh, On to our Zoo cards. We've got Zodiac Ram Ram. We've got a single copy of Thoroughblade. And we've got a single copy of Whiptail. Now, the downside with this is that we don't currently have access to Barrage. However, having these in the options that we do here means that you're likely to see at least one here. You could up this to four if you really want to make sure. But yeah, just three of these seems absolutely fine. Following down from that, we have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous. Spring one of those hand traps that I think you absolutely need to play in here so you can counter the likes of Max C, as well as plenty of other cards as well. Just generically very strong and one that you definitely want to run three copies of. After that, we have a single copy of Monster Reborn. Again, you know, absolutely fine as is. Uh, just one is perfectly good. A single copy. Well, I mean, you're going to only play one anyway, but that's besides the point. You get my point here. You want to play a copy of this card. A single copy of Foolish Barrel. Being able to dump basically any name into the grave is kind of cute. Uh, a lot of the time, you can also use this to force negates, force out Ash Blossoms and things, so you can go through the rest of your plays. Triple copies of Desires, this literally says draw two. If you are new to the game and you're considering whether the Banish 10 face down matters, it fucking doesn't. It literally says draw two cards. 
It says draw two cards. You're going to tutor out most of the cards you want, banish the shit you don't care about, and then draw two additional cards. And yeah, occasionally you are going to draw another copy of Desire. So you're going to draw two cards that do literally nothing for you, but additional resources are absolutely everything in this game. After that, we have triple copies of Fire Formation Tenki. This says add any of the Zodiacs or Fractal to your hand. So again, you want to run three copies of this. Triple copies of Twin Twisters. This well, there's some other options you could run in here. But Twin Twisters is really nice for me because the Discard Outlet is very good in this deck. Being able to dump any of these names into the grave, they just become almost like a second hand in the graveyard. So it really doesn't matter. And there's so many decks running background that you want ways to remove it. The downside is when you play decks like, for example, Eldlich, when you put their cards into the graveyard, they don't really mind all that much for the most part. But it's still better to have them off the field than on it. Next up, we have double copies of Call by the Grave. Max C is in this game. You want to be able to stop it. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Yeah, yeah, you just want to play it. Um, again, very strong. Good to go in first or second because, of course, you can just set it. And it becomes a spell and trap negate at that point as well. Because people do not play around this card for some weird reason. So, therefore, it's free. We then have double copies of Tri Brigade Revolt. This could quite possibly be the third copy if you wanted. I find a lot of the times when I play this in the TCG at least, which is a, well, it's a pretty different format, so there are some changes you want to make there. Uh, but I always found that I just wanted to see as many traps as possible. Stuff like Solemn Strike, Solemn Judgment, of which we're including one copy in here. And again, I'll get to that in a minute. And copies of cards like Revolt, which are probably the most powerful cards in the deck. So being able to see this, maybe open one if you're lucky, or just search it if you're not, is pretty good. And then lastly, a single copy of Solemn Judgment. I literally just don't have more copies. I could get them, I could craft them, but it's fine for now. It'll do the job. This could literally be a third copy of Revolt, or pretty much anything else you wanted instead. I do, however, seem to be the luckiest guy ever, so I open a single copy of Solemn Judgment quite frequently, so it really doesn't matter. Now, there are some considerations you may want to make for this, which is you could include cards like Lightning Storm and things like that, which may be a little bit controversial because normally you build your decks to go first for the most part. However, in a best of one format, which Mastodal is, you may want to consider main and some board breakers as well. And this deck is very capable of breaking boards. Make no mistake. That, that is something that this deck can definitely do. But having additional juice to get over that line may help you, especially once you get to the higher tiers of play. Now onto our extra deck here, we have a single copy of Tiger Mortar, a single copy of Dryden, a single copy of Borbo, a single copy of Shackanine, and a single copy of Zeus. That makes up our Exceeds. Now to explain this to you, this of course is going to allow you to attack directly. Uh, the second effect, or the effect where it's fucking sends loads of shit or wins it all over, I don't know, it does some fucking dumb stuff. It, it, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Borbo is irrelevant. The important bit is that it can attack directly. Because then it becomes Zeus. That's literally the point of it. Um, you have Dryden here, which can be used in that equation as well. Being able to pop stuff. If you're going first and you don't use your normal summon, but make most of your board. You can just normal summon and make a Dryden so you've got a pop during your opponent's turn. And then the next turn, this can be turned into Zeus as well. But yeah, usually what's going to happen most of the time is you're just going to make Borbo attack directly. Slap all the others apart from Dryden, unless you're trying to break the board as well along the way. Or maybe get rid of a pesky card stopping you from getting there. And then stick Zeus over the top. If you just go first, however, you'll normally just slap Dryden over something else. Target a card and pop it during your opponent's turn. And the next turn, you do the same thing again. Being able to end on Zeus with more materials, though, is, of course, very helpful. So having four materials to stick underneath is a very good option to consider. It's worth noting as well, if you are new to this, that Borbo having zero attack and battling doesn't matter because it is still battled. It doesn't need to do damage. It doesn't need to destroy a monster. It just needs to battle. It also doesn't need to be your Xe monster. It could be your opponent's one. It doesn't really come up very often, but you can crash your opponent's Xe monster and then go from there into this. Now onto our Link monsters here. We have a single copy of Almirage. This is for when you open those weird hands. We've only got, say, a Kit or a Nerval. This can help you get some cards into the grave and get your plays going that way. A single copy of Double Dragon Lords. This is so you can banish two from the grave and make it. It's just another free interrupt during turn one. Two copies of Ferragit is absolutely plenty. You don't need more copies than this. Just two is absolutely fine. This, of course, gets you an additional uh, summon, which is always handy as well. It enables you to dig a little bit deeper into your deck. It opens up extra zones for more Link Monsters. It just does, well, just about everything you could hope for. A single copy of Bear Brum. This is literally here to search Revolt, and that is pretty much the height of it. We have a single copy of Rugal. This helps you to recycle resources as well as trigger your Shirag if you've already got one on the field, which is kind of cute as well. Uh, but yeah, again, it just gives you options for later on. And of course, when it does go to the grave, being able to bring your opponent's monster's attacks down can come up more often than you would realize. 
a single copy of Apollo. You can get to this quite often on your first turn. Sometimes you'll only end with it with like two negates as well as the double dragon lords and like a set revolt. But against most decks, that is enough to win the duel. Access Code Talker is an OTK machine. And of course, you get plenty of different attributes into the grave for this. Uh, yeah, just a very, very strong card you need to play it in here. And then finally, two copies of Shrag is absolutely plenty. You don't want more than this, but it is one of those cards that you want to see or want to get access to. Being able to banish cards, as well as the fact when it goes to Grave, it basically searches you anything you want, is very strong. Now, that does more or less conclude the actual profile itself. Again, I'm going to go into a test game here so you can see the kind of lines of play that I'm doing. If you're someone that already knows this and you were just here to get your deck list, now's the time to tune out. Of course, hopefully you've subscribed already at this point. And, of course, if you want to see more of this stuff, do definitely let me know. I'll maybe even cover some other decks if I can get access to those or do more matches, whatever you want to see. But, anyway, for those of you who want to see how the deck plays or at least get some ideas, I'm going to go into a duel now. Hopefully, it's not an absolute tragedy. If it is, we'll just do a second one as well. Okay, so we're going to go into our duel and see how we get on here uh, after five more wins. Gold tier three. Sure, let's have a look. Let's see what we get here. Uh, I did do a test game just before this and just somehow unluckily ended up against a weird true Draco build. We opened absolutely every floodgate. So it was absolutely unplayable. Didn't make for a very good viewing. So I just decided to go ahead and start a new one. So let's see how we get on with this. There are sometimes games in this where you just have to accept that something bullshit's going to happen like that. Not much you can do. So opponent's maintenance goes second here. Um, we've opened two copies of Maxi, which is kind of cute because it means for the next two turns anything he decides to special summon. Oh, which against this is strong. Okay, let's go. Hopefully they don't deck us out. That would be kind of sad, but we're going to be able to get into a lot of resources here, which hopefully means we can see our spells and... Uh, Sorry, our hand traps and all that kind of stuff. And it means that next turn we can just go turbo. Uh, the concern here is that they may just put us so many fucking resources in our hand that we just can't play. Um, or like we deck out. That would be absolutely crazy, but I've seen it happen. So let's go ahead and wait and see. This is, of course, Dry Tron, which is very strong. Normally they end on the Herald, which <clears throat> can be a real, real pickle to, to deal with. Especially if they've got a lot of resources in hand, uh, which they may well do. So let's just wait and see what happens here. So based on the hand at the moment, which is going to continue to change throughout this, because it looks like they are just going to keep going, which is absolutely fine and understandable. <clears throat> we've got our Nervil here, which means we've got access to whatever. And then, of course, we've got our Zoo as well, which means we've got access to our Dryden, which means we have access to Zeus, a Borbo, and all those other options that we want to get into. So we've got two really good options for lines of play. We've also got the Zyres for being able to draw an additional two cards, which is really cute. Um, but we're in a really, really good position. And, of course, now we've got the Ash as well. This could come in quite important here just depending on what our opponent tries to do here oh so he's making beatrice now beatrice is a really strong card so again something we probably do want to ash here um because then just being able to send whatever they want is kind of filthy so we're gonna go ahead and ash that um we definitely don't want them dumping free stuff into the grave it's really really dumb okay so we'll ash that and see what happens again they may have more powerful options that we may have wanted to hold that for but uh, it is what it is. There's nothing we can really do. Okay, let's wait and see what happens here. Now, it is a bit weird because I've not actually played against this on here, so I don't know what cards they have and what they're missing. I think I've pretty much ended their turn, so that was probably the right call in the end. Um, I'm sure they're not playing the Purple Dante off this, so I don't really care. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so... Despite all of this, we actually have a bit of a weird hand. I think at the moment we probably want to play this safe uh, and try and do our try plays. Uh, do we want to do them initially? I think we need to because we can get the additional summon off Ferrigit for this and do it that way. So we're going to go ahead and normal our kit here. Use that as our normal summon. Hopefully we don't get max seed. Okay, so they're going to go ahead and use Beatrice effects to ditch to send. Uh, that's absolutely fine. We're going to hold that maxi for later on. Again, this could absolutely cripple them. Eva's a really dumb card. Uh, why this exists is beyond me. Um, it's been banned in TCG. It's banned in the OCG, I'm pretty sure. But it's not banned on here, which is great, great fun being able for your opponent to just do whatever they want. I'm pretty sure that's a monster effect negate. He's just got added to his hand there for free as well, which is really fucking annoying. Um, and that may change how we have to do things here a little bit. But let's... Let's play as normal. <clears throat> We're going to attempt to use this. Hopefully that will force the effect out of nothing else. Uh, and then we can go from there. So we're going to make our Almirage and then attempt to activate Kit's effect. 
And this is going to attempt to send another copy of Nurgle so that we can add Keras and go from there. They will have to negate it if they do have that monster negate because they don't want this to go through. Um, yeah, there we go, as expected. That's absolutely fine. Again, we have Desires, so we are going to have to whiff... Uh, well, hopefully we don't whiff it. We're going to have to risk it and drop Desires, and hopefully that works out quite nicely, but... Yeah, I mean, we've still got a bit of a way to go yet. Um, okay, right, let's Desires, see what happens. Is that Ash as well, man? This is going to suck so bad. Uh, no. Okay, cool, right. Um, we are not quite back in business. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, actually, yeah, that's not too bad, because we can use the effect of this to send our Keras and do it that way, and then Keras can add... Uh, sorry, to get our Keras. Uh, send to the graveyard. Nerval. And Nerval can add our Keras. And we're back in business. So we don't actually miss out on anything here. It means we have had to go a little bit of a longer way about it and, you know, eat some resources we didn't necessarily want to. But fortunately, it looks like the maxi has really paid off our opponent, just not really taking too much consideration for it. It is going to backfire here, so... Uh, let's go ahead and use this. Hmm. Okay, so we have a ton of options here, but I still think it's correct to go down this line of play. Uh, so we're going to get rid of these and make Ferrigit. Uh, nope, we can cancel that. Uh, Ferrigit. Make that here. Uh, I think we just get rid of this off the field. We don't want it here. It literally does nothing for us. Uh, yeah, we can just target you. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to use the effect of Ferrigid to summon our Thoroughblade. Uh, which can also make Dryden if we want it to. Um, I don't know if we bother. I think maybe we do. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. We'll figure that part out in a minute. Um, okay, let's have a real quick think actually on that subject. So, we can make Dryden here and pop a card. Uh, but I don't know that it offers us any real value. Um, other than the fact that we're going to get into Zeus, which we're going to do anyway. Although clearing an extra body does mean we get the extra damage on board. So yeah, yeah, let's fuck it. Let's do it, right? Let's go ahead and make that Dryden. And we're going to make it here. And just to clarify, Beatrice is just that it can summon Dante from the extra deck. Uh, one burn in the Abyss monster. Okay, the chances are they are not playing another one. If they are, then yeah, okay, then life sucks, right? What can I do about that? Uh, okay, so let's pop this. We probably could have just laid another monster over there instead of wasting the uh, the 1600 attack, but there's not much we can do about that. Uh, just being able to battle, though, is kind of all that matters here. Um, okay, let's make a Rugal. Because then we can dig deeper with our Ferrigit when it goes to the grave, which is nice as well. And we've already got the Revolt, so we definitely do not need to go into our Bear Brum here. Okay, so Rugal comes out. Ferrigit effect is going to go off. We are absolutely going to allow that. We'll probably put back a Twin Twisters because the second Twin Twisters doesn't really offer us anything against this deck. Um, yeah, definitely that's correct. Uh, Foolish Barrel is a really good option to have here. It doesn't help us this turn, uh, but it may well do down the line. So uh, let's have a look. Do we want to just do that? I don't think we're going to get any damage on board here either way. Uh, okay, let's just go to Battle Phase. We'll clear this because we can and then of course our Dryden can attack directly uh, so it has declared battle it has battled even though it is for zero and we can go to main phase two and we can make our Zeus uh, and Zeus is pretty fucking filthy uh, did I click something wrong let's try this again select maybe I click cancel I find that the, the, the controls on this are kind of weird. Sometimes it feels like uh, things are in the wrong place. But maybe it's just because I'm not paying attention. I don't know. Uh, there are additional effects on these. But in this instance, they don't really come up all that much. Uh, they just can, but they don't. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're just going to keep slapping this on so we can just get those extra materials again. The good thing with this is that these just become additional bodies for you to vanish later on if you need them. So there is that like additional benefit. Like this alone has just given us access to another uh, Shurag if we need it later on. I am weary though that we are playing into a very, very strong deck. So it's not going to be 
as straightforward as that, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to keep this here. We're going to keep it in defense in case we've got, like, Lightning Storm or anything like that to play around. You can't do anything about your Link Monsters, but you want to protect this. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and set two here. Uh, we can just discard the Foolish Burial if we need to for the Twin Twisters, because it doesn't matter much. And Maxi should give us enough follow-up. We've got a lot of good options here, so we only really want to nuke the uh, with the Zeus if we are absolutely threatened and have no choice. I think we're in a relatively good position as long as our opponent hasn't gone broken. Okay, so we're going to see the effect here, which means we are definitely going to drop the Maxi on that. They need to know... Honestly, thank God Maxi is not available in the TCG card. He's dumb. Okay, so they're going to Ash Blossom here, which is absolutely fine. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that they've got one really at this point. <clears throat> uh, that's fine. We'll leave that as is. Okay, so they're now going to go about their plays relatively unhindered for the most part. Uh, I mean, we can hit things pretty much straight away. If they summon another one, then I think I have to hit it. I've got not much choice in that in that matter with the... Um, the, the revolt, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, ben 10's activated. Nope, we're not going to do anything there. Let's just wait and see. Okay, so they've now got a monster in the gate. Now, the good thing is that even with revolt, we can chain block. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. Which means that they're only going to be able to respond with that herald at the very end of the chain. Now, we could be unlucky and they've somehow got the purple herald, which negates traps. Uh, but I don't see it personally, so let's just wait and see. What's cool about this is we're also going to reload our graveyard, which means Rugal's got another option as well. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so we've got the ultimate list now. I know that they've got at least one negate that we're going to have to deal with here, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's one of those things. So I think what we do is I think we yeet this now. It's going to force a negate immediately anyway, uh, and we can always clear after this anyway, I think, with this. Um, I think it's just negate. It's not like it's unaffected or anything like that. Okay, so they're going to discard to negate. They have to. Okay, so they've definitely got two at least. Um, okay, we've got two options here. We can either yeet this twice and just clear the field. Um, and try and get our advantage from there. Or we, we hold tight and just see what happens. Right, let's try and get the, um, let's try and get the Rugal here. That way, if we do have to clear the field, then we can get like, we can just keep plusing off of it. Uh, and if he negates this, then he's... I'm pretty sure only got a spell card left. Um, which puts us in a really good position. I don't think he will negate this, though. Um, okay, no, he's just scooped. Okay, good. Well, you get the idea of how this is supposed to work. Uh, despite my misclicks and things like that. Uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you some ideas of things that you can do. Uh, I think maybe we go for another one just to see how we get on. So you can get some more ideas again of how the deck's supposed to play. You didn't necessarily get the full uh, idea from that one alone. Again, if you've had enough, feel free to tune out now. But if not, stick with me and see what happens. Okay, so whenever we get to choose, we're going to want to go first. The only advantage of going second is you get the extra card, unless your deck is built specifically to go second, which in a best of one series is not normally the best way to do things. Again, you may want additional like board breakers and things like that, but that's by the by. Okay, so we've got an okay start in hand here. Um, not ideal, but we can play with it. So we can use the effect of this to summon itself. Uh, by discarding the kit, and the kit can then send a Nerval, which can then search as another card, and we can go from there. Bear in mind, we haven't used our normal summon here, which is always very desirable to avoid doing, because it means you've always got that follow-up power play. Mostly, normal summons are going to be your stronger cards, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to Nerval effect to search here. Uh, of course, we have no idea what our opponent is playing at the moment. Uh, we're obviously not going to Ash ourselves, because we're not that guy. Okay, our opponent has got a full 15 extra deck, uh, 39, so playing like 44 cards, could be literally anything. Um, okay, let's go effect activation here, we could get away with not using our normal summon yet as well again, but uh, it's probably not likely to get us very far. Uh, let's do that. And we're going to summon our Ferrigit. And then our Ferrigit is going to summon our... 
Fractal. Which again means we still have our normal summon. Now again we have a few different options here depending on what we want to do. What I'm probably going to do here for the sake of simplicity is turn these into a Brum so we can guarantee get the Revolt. Make them into a 2 Appaloosa, set the Revolt and then Desires for the rest. It does mean we miss out on this but I think overall we, we stand to gain more than we lose with that. So let's just do that. Oh, no that's not what we want to do. Cancel. Idiot. Idiot. Right. What I was supposed to do <laughs> was this. If we had another monster in hand, of course, we could just go way further with this and it'd be absolutely insane. Uh, but we're just going to do this for now. Like two Appaloosa plus Revolt plus whatever I draw off that with an Ash as well is a pretty good number of things that I can do with that. Uh, so we go for Apollo for two. Again, you could make a Rugal here as well. It's another option so you can add resources back and maybe do more later. But again, not knowing what my opponent is using, I'd say Apollo for two is a pretty reasonable option. The only downside is it's kind of small, but it's whatever. Um, okay, we're going to go one U. We definitely want to know what we get off this first. Okay, so our draw is... Unless our opponent's going to respond, which they're not. Our draw is a kit. Oh, okay. That that makes things interesting. Okay, so Twisters is going to go back here. Uh, okay. Oh, man. Um, I think we have to keep the kit, which is kind of sad. Uh, we need this. Draw two is really nice. I think we put back the Ash, which sounds crazy to me, but also the fact that making this with double Dragon Lord. <clears throat> oh, okay, we've got up to four we can do here. So uh, let's 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 use this first and see what we get off this before we make any decisions about what line of play we go down. Oh man! <laughs> Uh, we've got so many options. This is really cool. Um, so I think we just take double Dragon Lords here. Uh, so we do that. Banish these two. Oh, fuck. Okay, I forgot. Brum locks you in. That's kind of annoying. Okay, then we make Rugal. Okay, it's not, not, quite, as, not quite as good. Um, yeah, R Bear Brum, when you use the effect, locks you into only some tri brigades. I'm a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I played this deck, like, in an actual, like, setting where this has come up. So, that's fine. Okay, we just do that. We can get more resources back with this. Uh, we've still got a double negate as well as this effect as well. So, let's just end there and see what our opponent does. Again, pretty silly mistake there, but this is the reality. Um, when you make misplays, you just have to make the most of it and... Luckily, we've recovered at least a little bit there, just depending on what our opponent's playing. So let's see what they start off with, and we can uh, infer from there what we need to do next. There are some decks where, once you get used to them, you'll know that like if the normal summon drops, you want to hit the normal summon right away. Like It just depends on the deck. Um, there's some you want to wait for them to commit raw resources, depending on what they're playing. The fact that they've set a trap first makes me think it could be anything. It could be like uh, Mech Knights or something. I don't know. I'm assuming Mech Knights are in this. I don't think I've seen a single Mech Knight in this game. but It seems very deliberately set in that column. Or maybe my opponent is just one of those people that doesn't really understand playing around columns. Uh, what have they activated here? Crystal, Crystal Beasts. Uh, okay. Sure. Crystal Beasts. Okay, so for those of you who used to play this game, if you're coming back, you might actually recognize these cards. Crystal Beasts. Not particularly good anymore, but ah, they're fucking expensive, man. I played against a guy at YCS in London, uh, well, more than a couple of years ago now, I suppose. A German guy who used to take around max rarity Crystal Beasts to all YCSs. He'd go in and he'd scrub the entire event. He'd lose like almost all of his games, but he didn't care. He just wanted to take his... Max Rarity Crystal Beasts on tour. Very cool. Uh, the effect of this one is what? When it's summoned, you can place a Crystal Beast monster. I don't care about that, so that's fine. Like, if he tries to go to battle phase here, or he somehow gets, like, the rainbow or something like that, then we eat the trap card. But otherwise, he's not going to get very far, because we're just going to banish the Pegasus if he tries to get anywhere. Oh, okay. Mech Knights. Mech Knights it is. Uh, okay. Uh, that makes things interesting. I think we have to here. 
Like, I don't know what else he's playing at. But, but why doesn't he make Mech Knight Crystal? I swear to fucking God, if I lose to this, what I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys, and he's playing this weird fucking mech. Oh my goodness. I hope not. I really hope not. Uh, okay, so all he can do at the moment is shift his Mech Knight if he's lucky. Um, which... Oh, that sucks. Uh, yeah, we have to. We have to stop that. We've got no choice. Because my opponent drawing uh, plenty of cards is not nice. Let's see what happens. He's going to shift his boy. I do not care. So that says to me that he's probably got another Mech Knight in hand. Uh, because he's trying to open that zone. Uh, I'm not really sure. If he's got another Mech Knight, it could be a bit of a pain in the ass. So I need to, I need to eat the monster. Although he's saying that he could, he could still put it in that zone in front of the, uh, is it the Carbuncle, Carbuncle, um, which could be a bit of a pain in the ass. But let's just wait and see. We're gonna go for a four either way, though. I think that is absolutely correct. So actually, I think what I do here is since he's already moved the Mech Knight, if he's got another one, he's got another one, there's nothing I can do about it. So I think I actually don't activate the effect of the Shrag yet. I just summon it. Just so it's here so I can banish when I need to. And then I can use Rugal to summon another one back if he does anything that actually threatens my board in any way. Um, and then banish at that point. I think that's probably the more sensible option. So let's just go ahead and use this to search. And then I'm going to chain block it by putting this on the end of the chain in case he does have a response. He shouldn't do, but just in case. Um, that's fine. Uh, no, we're good. Uh, I don't really know what I've done here. It doesn't matter. I'd rather search something good. Um, I've already used this, so I think I'll just dump a Fractal and search the Keras. Is probably correct. Um, so I've got a follow-up play if I need it. I've got an extra body that I can get access to. Uh, so let's just wait and see what he does because I've still got the free banish and I've still got a monster in the gate here as well. So let's just keep that in mind. If he does have a second mech knight though, he's got like three columns he can summon it in. I don't know if he was just trying to bait me and hoping that I would just react. Um, uh, I have to do this during the main phase so I guess we have to try and get rid of the... Uh, I think we just get rid of the trap card and accept that he's going to beat over one of my monsters that I don't care about, the Apollo. Um, so let's get this so that we've got a follow-up search. Because he can't hit over that. The only thing he can actually hit over is the Apollo. I oh, know, that's not true actually. He's got this as well. He can hit over two things. Let me banish this. Yeah, that was probably a good call because that's a fucking good trap card by the way. When it's activated, you target level 5 or higher monster in your game. I'll special summon it. When it leaves, we'll destroy that. They get any monster's effect that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight monster. Fuck you. I'm so glad that we just decided to eat that. Ah, it paid off. Okay. So they've got some thinking to do here because... Uh, I, don't, I mean, obviously, I don't know what they've got in hand, but... They can clear uh, anything except for Shrag. So it's all irrelevant because I can special summon next turn. Which has got another Banish. Uh, unless he's got something really good in main phase 2. Uh, it's going to put me in a bit of trouble, to be honest with you. And of course, we've got the d dump as well. We've got access to Dryden and, and Zeus, which means we can send everything to the graveyard, which is also cute as well. So, again, just stuff to consider. Uh, I'm not sure why he's done that. I'm not sure there's a good reason not to just clear the... Kara... Uh, What's he doing? I'm not sure there's a reason that you don't clear this. Because I've already activated the effect. This turn. So. Oh. Oh. They've got a... Uh, can they make the fucking rainbow fusion thing? Pay 2,000 life points. Neos? Rainbow Neos? Is rainbow Neos in this game? Rainbow Neos is kind of annoying. But I don't, I don't think I don't have any outs to it. I can't even remember what it does. Shuffles a card. 
Send some stuff. Let's have a look. Uh, monster fusion summon, yada yada yada. Once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. Send the monster you control to graveyard, shuffle all your opponent's control into the deck. Uh, it's only during his turn and it's main phase two. So that's absolutely fine, actually. It really is okay. I'm going to clear his field now. Um, which is really good. Um, actually, I think I might even be able to kill him. Can I kill him this turn? I've got loads of options, so yeah, I probably can is the answer. Uh, we'll do this. Yeah. Hope he doesn't have maxi, I guess, is the, the real kicker here, but I think we're okay. Um, activate effect. So we don't need to use our normal summon, because we can hold our normal summon for Thorough Blade. Uh, we use this. Vanish. Four. I could go two and go Ferrigid, but I don't think I need to do that at this point. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, we'll hold these in case you want to go access code. Uh, this, yes. It doesn't really matter. Again, I'm not super optimal at this. It's been a long time since I played the deck other than on this. So, uh, again, I'm playing intermittently, but it should give you some ideas of things that you can do. Uh, we want to banish this because this will be a real, real fucking pain to deal with. Uh, so we've got 4200. Uh, we've still got a normal summon, which puts us still short of it. Um, however, we still have this. So let's see. I don't even remember if we've still got a Nerval left. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're good now. Like, we're really good now, I think. Uh, so we can use this to normal instead. And then we make Ferrage it. Um, Spanish 2. I think we have enough for Ferrage it. Or we just kill him. Like I'm fucking around. What am I doing? Spanish these. Like unless he's randomly got Karibo. Then we should be okay. Uh, yeah, maths. Uh, 3, 5, 4, 6, 1. Battle phase. Uh, attack. Always attack Lois first in case they're playing fucking Gauze. Mm. Gauze. Still hurts my soul to talk about it now. There we have it. Big animation. Boom. Well, that's us, ladies and gentlemen. That's us for our two matches. Uh, we've had some misclicks, some misplays, a lot of thinking, but hopefully it's given you some ideas of what you should do if you're playing the deck and what you probably shouldn't do as well. And that, my amigos, is all for today's video. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe, or at least hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In any case, thank you very much for making it this far. Now, it is worth noting whilst we're here that this isn't the only kind of content I do. In fact, this is the very first one of these videos, so if you do want to see more of these, do let me know. But otherwise, I tend to do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos and some live matches occasionally as well. There's also some event vlogs thrown in there quite frequently as well. So keep an eye out for those. If you're someone who's interested in how regionals go out, how bigger events go out and all of that good stuff. So if you're the kind of person that likes some lukewarm nonsense to consume whilst you're busy taking a shit on the toilet, as opposed to anywhere else, of course, then this is probably the kind of content for you. Absolute fucking nonsense. Seriously, though, it's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for coming along. Again, I do genuinely appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.